Today, we are rolling the dice and letting them decide what mead we make. Let's get started. All right, so this video is um, it's gonna be really fun. We are taking five different dice and rolling them, and they are going to dictate what mead we make. So we have a D20, which is a 20-sided dice. We have a D12. We have a D8. We have a D6 and a D4. So these are all different kinds of dice you need. You can also do this, and I encourage you to, it's kind of part of the fun of this, um, roll these dice and then it will dictate what brew you make. Here is what each dice means. The D20. When you roll the D20, it will be telling you what percent ABV brew you are going to make. Now, here's what's tricky. If you roll a one through four, you are going to re-roll and add those numbers together. A little complexity there. If you roll like a 24, Eh, not gonna happen exactly, but um, that basically just means get as high ABV as you possibly can. If you roll an 18 to a 20, you're gonna also re-roll and take the number you get and subtract. So let's say you roll an 18, you re-roll and get a six, you subtract those, you'd make a 12% mead. That's the D20. Um, the D12 is what fruit you're going to use. So here are all the fruits based off of the numbers you would get. The D8 is a, or is what kind of yeast you're gonna use. You have bread yeast, 71B, yada, yada, yada. Here's all of that. The D6 is um, what kind of honey you're gonna use. We have buckwheat, clover, orange blossom, wildflower, meadow foam, or blueberry blossom. And the last one is the adjunct, or what little change you're gonna make. So this is to where you have to both shade the honey. If it's a one, it's an oaked mead. If it's a two, no water mead if it's a three, and carbonated is a four. So we're gonna go ahead and roll our dice, and we're gonna figure out what mead we're going to make. So let me go ahead and do this. So the mead we're gonna have to make is, so we have a nine, a three, a four, another four, and another four. Okay, so that means the mead we're gonna be making is going to be 9% ABV. It is going to use, it's gonna be an apple mead, 9% apple mead using Kvai Kvass, um, that is with wildflower honey and has to be carbonated. Not exactly the most exciting mead, because I think I've made something like this before, but we're gonna go ahead and make it. So let's go buy some ingredients. So now we go ahead and we mix up our ingredients. As you can see, I have all of them here. I even added one teaspoon of Fermade O um, to give this some yeast nutrient from the beginning. And now about 24 hours later, it's fermenting. So we let this ferment all the way through the primary and then come back. All right, and we're out of the primary. The starting gravity was 1.065. After this primary, it was 1.000. Now I want to back sweeten and I want to bottle carb this. So I am adding one third cup of erythritol to back sweeten, which is a non-fermentable sugar, and 22.6 grams of priming sugar based off of this calculator. It's important that you use a priming sugar calculator so you don't uh, blow up bottles. And now I am going to bottle them and cap them, and we're going to wait about two weeks to let them bottle carb. All right, here we are for the final tasting. This mead has actually sat for a month. Um, I got real lazy, so it's been a month of bottle carving. Let's see if it has actually bottle carbed. Oh, had a little hiss there. Yeah, ooh, that's great. Ooh, we got bottle carb. Okay, let's go and pour it. Nice. It's not, not super, super carbonated, but that's okay. We definitely have some carbonation in there. All right, well, let's taste it. Yeah, okay, so byproduct of 
bottle carbing, you get a little bit of yeastiness in there because there are yeast that have helped the bottle carbing process. So that's a natural thing. A little tiny bit of yeastiness, kind of that breadiness to it. But the apple character is nice. There's some sweetness from the erythritol. Yeah, pretty refreshing. I, if I were to do this again and not bottle carb, I would probably, if I were to do it again, I would, I would probably not bottle carb it, I should say, because I would want to present more honey character. There's a little honey character here. There's some floral notes in there. Uh, but for the most part, it's, it's diminished, been kind of uh, fermented out, probably the best way to say it. So it's really, that's not bad though. The carbonation's refreshing. Oh yeah, I, I dig this. It gets better and better each sip. Um, I liked my the way I did the apple. Honestly, I think it worked pretty well. Uh, you can, of course, go and use a lot of fruit. You can use concentrate. You can use whatever you want. But this has been my version. Now, I want to do something kind of special. I introduced this idea a while back, and I introduced it on my Discord, and somebody actually made a uh, a D and D dice mead off of this game. It finished it before I finished mine. So I'm gonna taste test theirs. So this is from Larry and uh, his uh, roll, his mead he had to make was a grape bread yeast um, carbonated, oh sorry, requirements. 7% grape wildflower honey bread yeast and carbonated. So he has this recipe that's on screen right now. He force carved his, which I probably could have done. I just didn't want to deal. I wanted to do this in a bottle carb method. We'll see what the difference is. Let's go ahead and open his up. A little bit of that hiss. Force carved, which is nice. I bet that means his is going to be way more clear than mine. Oh, good carbonation level. Yeah, he, uh, he talked about using bread yeast and he was like, yeah, it's the first time I've had to use bread yeast. So let's see what bread yeast and grape yields. That's really interesting. The grape is so, it's like warm. It doesn't have a lot of bright uh, acidity to it. Normally you'd have tartaric acid within grapes. I will say that he used Nature Nate's <laughs> um, the honey bear honey. So a it's wildflower honey, so it does not have any predominant big flavor. This smooth though, started um, about the same time I made mine. It's That is smooth, it's clear, it looks great. great. Um, I, I like that, what I like about this is the challenge of using bread yeast. This is really good. Larry, this is fantastic. For, for something, 7% is low ABV, so it's hard to get a big body, carbonation helps. Um, but retaining and getting that sweetness and you know utilizing your bread yeast well it works pretty well so this has been a D, &D or we use the dice a lot in D, &D but D, D dice mead and i've i'll show all of the charts and things if you would like to roll your own of course and uh this is a fun process just because you get to you get to try something new you get to to literally roll the dice and make the dice decide what you make. Now I have, I have thought of one extra thing. In all of my stuff, I neglected to use the D10. I used the D12, the D8, I skipped the D10, or the 10-sided dice. So you can roll a 10-sided dice if you want an extra challenge in this, and you can roll, I'm gonna call it a spice dice. So. Of these 10, this is, these are your numbers for your spice dice, if you would like to add the extra variable. That would just be an extra challenge, Challenge, I would say. You don't have to do it by any means, but if you want to roll based off of all these things, that could add some, some fun to this brew that uh, would be interesting. I challenge you to go and do this. You don't have to have the physical dice to do this. You can get on and they make online dice. Roll these online dice. In fact, I'll try and find a uh, link to one down below if you'd like to do that, but challenge yourself with a new mead, with a new uh, way to make mead. Of course, make regular meads, plan your meads, but take this challenge and see if you can make whatever thing you get taste amazing. Let me know if you actually do this below and what you roll 
because I would love to hear the results. I'm sure obviously there's endless combinations of results. So it'll be fun to see in the comments what everybody rolls. And then of course, if you actually make it, how it turns out. Shout out to all my friends in the Discord. Shout out to Larry for making this meet and finishing his before me. Um, I've had a lot of fun and I will be back with more content. I hope you take this dice challenge and have a great day. Cheers. <laughs>